Another game and another one in the books for the good guys as the Dallas Mavericks go into Boston, initially kick their ass, and then have to hang on for dear life as they nearly blow a 25-point lead. That pains my soul to even say. Now, Luka Doncic was unreal in this game. Goes, I mean, from the jump, he makes 10 of his first 12 baskets, or 10 of his first 12 shot attempts, I should say, and he builds a huge lead for Dallas in the first half. The Mavericks are up something like 20 points almost at the half, and it's just because in that second quarter, they're just pouring it on, and Luka is almost unconscious shooting some of these step-back threes, and Boston couldn't hang with it for a while. And really, it wasn't until towards the end of the third quarter that Boston started really, really making that run. And they opened the fourth quarter on a strong run as well. That cuts well into the lead. The lead cu cuts down all the way to two points. Two points against Boston. Yes, you're in Boston, but you were beating the tar out of them. You had led the entire game. Now, you get the win, and you never surrendered the lead, so great. But this had a chance to be a major, major statement victory. I still like the the intestinal fortitude that they showed overcoming what could have been a disastrous result for them, a disastrous defeat. And, you know, I, I was hyping up Luka early. Again, 36-8-5 and five when your offensive game is going that much. Five assists is low for Luka, but when your offensive game is going that much, 10 of your first 12, 11 out of 15, 7 of 11 on threes, you don't have to worry as much about creating because you're dialed in. KP, yeah, he ends with 19 points, and that might not jump off the page, but he's three of seven on threes. He had a strong performance as well, three blocks, two steals. I don't remember if he actually ended up getting the Defensive Player of the Game award for a second consecutive game, which I think would actually be the first time we've had a, a champion defend his belt. I don't know why I put all of that in quotations, but defend his belt in this case, if he did in fact retain it. But he had a strong game. 19 points might not explode off the page, six of 15 from the field, but he had a strong performance here. And a lot of it was on that defensive end. Now we will talk about the fourth quarter because you barely saw KP in that. And we'll get into that. But can't be overlooked in this as well. I already spotlighted the two big guys, right? Jalen Brunson was a beast in this game. 21 points off the bench, 8 of 10 from the field. In fact, he started 7 of 7, knocks down the clutch free throws when it's a two-point game. Dallas is on the brink of utter disaster. I want to say 16 seconds left, and it's a two-point game. They've just made mind-boggling mistake. I think, I can't remember who it was that had the turnover. Was it Maxi? Had a turnover in our half of the court on a trap. Leads to a layup the other direction. This is seconds after a Kimball Walker three. And everything is swinging away from you in terms of momentum. But Jalen Brunson, cool as the other side of the pillow, takes the ball, beats the trap, and takes the foul, gets to the line, and knocks down both free throws. Now, Boston, you know, obviously they would keep fighting and we'd go a little bit longer, but it never got that close again. Brunson put it out of reach. He's 4-4 four four at the line, 8 of 10 for the game. Only one three-point attempt on the game. That's pretty low for Brunson. But his 33 minutes were huge for Dallas here. So, obviously, Luka, stupendous. Is, is that a big enough buzzword, by the way, for Luka in this case? A stupendous game for Luka Doncic. Jalen Brunson, a monster game. KP, a very strong game. If not quite as much leaping off the page in terms of the offensive performance, it's still a strong overall game, I would say, from him in terms of how he's able to impact both sides of the floor. Now, KP only played two minutes in the fourth quarter. There's a reason for this. This is uh, from Callie Kaplan on Twitter. After the game, Rick Carlisle said of Porzingis playing only two minutes in the fourth quarter, quote, they were playing small, they being Boston. That would have been a very tough defensive thing for him. He understood. When I subbed him in, he actually said, Quote, yes, this is a quote within a quote. Are you sure? End quote. End quote. And yeah, and, and another comment here, I think this was from Brown, Brad Townsend. 
He points out, elaborating further on how Boston was playing small and that would have been tough for KP, according to Carlisle, that would have basically put him on to Marcus Smart. And yes, that would have been a very, very difficult matchup for KP. You kind of had to. And it's interesting that Boston going small in the fourth quarter had a big part of their run. Again, cutting down a 25-point lead all the way down to two points. It, it was unreal, the run they made. Perhaps that was a miscalculation on their part not to go with that more in the game or at least earlier in the game because Dallas blew the roof off this thing in the second quarter. Luka was unconscious shooting threes. An another game here, I believe, tying his career high seven made three-pointers. He, he has been unreal in recent months. This is from Tim McMahon on Twitter. This is breaking down Luka's step-back threes by month this season. December, only 14.3%. Yeah, the step back wasn't so sexy back in those days. January, 33.3%. All right, we're getting respectable. February, 41.1%. Good googly moogly. And now in March, now that we're in April, but in March, 40.3%. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable how he has taken that. He's taken effectively the most difficult three-point shot you can. And he's making it at an at an unreal clip the past three months now. Especially the last two months, unreal. Before that, it was just a, a pretty comfortable mark for that difficulty of a shot. I saw this somewhere on Twitter, and I, I don't remember the source, otherwise I would shout them out as I shout out other people where I get little these little snippets from. But there was some breakdown that showed Luca is in like the top 1% in terms of the most difficult three-point shots he takes. And the frequency with which he takes these incredibly difficult shots, he's in the top 1% of that, and yet he's ahead... What was it? Yeah. It's like 99.5% of the league takes easier three-point shots than Luca, but he makes them at a clip for that difficulty of a shot at a higher rate than anyone else. So... Imagine, this is why we keep saying, if you just have another, like, Brunson's a good ball handler. But if you have another creator and pair him with Luka, where Luka can actually go a little bit off ball, good gravy what you would be able to accomplish in this regard. Because if you can get Luka some easy shots, you could really do something with that. Like, as good as he is shooting threes, he's become finally that great three-point shooter because of the past three months. He was not good at the start of the season. He really had to find that shot, work himself into shape. But he got there, and now we're sitting in a situation where you're thinking like, man, if you just get another good ball handler to pair with him, and, you know, Reddick's another sharpshooter. He's not a he's not a creator in that regard. And we'll see. By the way, on that front, uh, Reddick on his podcast the other day, uh, what was it, the old man in the three, I think is what he calls it, He's going to join the team this week when they play in New York, but he's still progressing from his non-surgical procedure. By the way, people saying like, oh, a non-surgical procedure, what's that, a massage? Ha <laughs> ha. No, no, it was an injection. And uh, he's got to work his way back from it. He says he is progressing. He's, he's been on the floor like eight of the last nine days or seven of the last eight, something to that effect. And he's progressing, but he's not ready yet. So we'll see how long it takes him to actually get on the floor and make his Mavericks debut. Even at 36 years old, his three-point shooting would be very valuable to this team. Obviously, we've seen what Melly's been able to do. I am, I'm encouraged by that. And to get a guy like that, that affordable, that you can work with in a longer-term picture, I think is a positive. The little flashes we've seen have been nice. I'm encouraged on that front. But Redick was the centerpiece of this deal, so... Let's see how quickly they can get him on the floor, see what he can bring to the table, because this team, because they will not kind of get out of their own way, essentially, because they refuse to deviate from their plan of not resting um, Luka and KP on the same night, or in general, just not having to rest them in general. I know Luka missed a couple games because of non-COVID illness, but the the deviation where they refuse to play both guys in back-to-backs, I think it's putting them at risk here because it's preventing them from moving up, 
Whereas the five seed used to be right there, very obtainable. It's still obtainable. You're, what, three and a half back, though, of the Nuggets and the Blazers who have the same record and are five and six, respectively. Odds are you're going to be in a situation where you're going to have to deal with the play-in game. You're going to have to deal with the uh, with the Spurs for that play-in game. You're currently the seven seed, but you know it's a half game up on the Spurs at the eight seed. Regardless, you're going to be facing them in that regard. And then you have the winner of that game is the seven seed. The loser of that game then plays another game, which is the winner of nine versus ten, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you're Dallas, your only mentality is look. Once we get to the postseason, it's basically the postseason mini qualifier. We just can't lose back to back. We'll have one game against San Antonio, and then we got another game against, as it stands right now, either the Warriors or the Grizzlies. One of those uh, feels a lot better than the other, but we'll we'll see how that works out. So that's got to be your mindset if you're Dallas. It's just like, look, I want to move up, but Dallas seems. Like, they're very set in this plan of resting KP, not playing him in back-to-backs, and they're going to be meticulous about it. And that's how you're dropping games that you shouldn't be dropping. You know, that's how you're in a situation where you're dealing with the Pacers. You lose by 15. You had KP, and he played very well in that game, but that's a game you didn't need to lose. That's how you lose to the Pelicans then, that one's nine. But again, it's a game that was very, very winnable. And in that one, you didn't have Luka or KP. Like, that's that's why I almost didn't even feel like bothering to cover that game because it's like the flag was kind of waved before we got there. So I don't know, man. They're, They're basically digging in their heels saying... We believe more so in this idea of not deviating from our plans to try and maximize the health, energy levels, all that come postseason for Luka and KP. And we're willing to roll the dice on being a seven or an eight seed and deal with those consequences as opposed to really, really, really making the push now to try and get that five seed or that six seed and not having them entirely at 100%. I don't know that I agree with that strategy, but because and here's why I don't agree with it. I've said before, if you have both of them healthy and playing at the top of their game, you can beat anybody. However, it's you if you're playing this on a probability scale, you're basically saying like, "Hey, ideally if we do this, they'll be there." Well, we don't know for sure that they'll be there, and even if you're trying to minimize which you believe to be the risk of them getting dinged up, particularly KP, it, it's still, it's a roll of the dice. And I'd rather play with what I know, which is, hey, I have a very winnable game here. And if I win this game with my guys, then I don't have to worry as much about that. If you avoid the play-in tournament, then you're saving yourself two extra games, one or at least one extra game, maybe two extra games, you know, in that regard. And I like to know that I'm in the actual playoffs, not having to mess around and be in a play-in scenario where just a couple bad games or bad breaks, and I'm done. And technically, I wouldn't have qualified for the postseason. Like, that's very, very unideal. That's not how you say that, but that's less than ideal. Let's uh, pivot back here. Bobby Carello pointing out on Twitter, Luca's March. 29.4 29.4 points per game, 8.7 assists, 7.4 rebounds, 52.7% from the field, and 43.3% from three. The Mavericks are 8-2 and two in the 10 games that uh, he played in. Granted, as we said, he missed a couple games with non-COVID illness. 8-2 and two in the games in which he played. That is very deserving of Western Conference Player of the Month, whether he gets it. I don't know. Honestly, I don't really care about those kind of accolades as I know he doesn't care. If he says that, hey, MVP would be cool, I guess, but like that's not my focus, then why would he care about Western Conference Player of the Month? It's even less meaningful in that regard. Uh, Let me see here. Another call out. Most games in Mavericks history with 30 plus points, 
five plus rebounds and five plus assists. The leader is in fact not Dirk Nowitzki. It is Mark Aguirre with 52. Dirk is in second with 47. And now nipping at his heels, we have Luka Doncic with 46 such games in Mavericks history. Pretty incredible stuff there. But in general, the Mavericks, even though they're not moving up as I hoped, even though I still think they're playing a kind of reckless game in many respects, Luka's performances and his play in this recent stretch are undeniable. You cannot separate him from the rest of the MVP pack. He, they are because of the Mavericks record and where they stand in the, in the rankings, but he's not, his play is on par with anybody this year, and he's just not getting talked about because of the team success, which is a shame. I know it doesn't matter to him, but it is one of those things where some of the people being discussed, you're like, yeah, he has a very good argument. He has a very good argument. Good argument. I, I'd say Luca should be in that same category, but uh, oh, come on, this guy? Like, when you're comparing their seasons head to head. And again, all these guys are having great years, no doubt. But it's funny to me that Luca's having a better year than last year when he finished in the top five, and yet we're saying, like, oh, there's no, there's no buzz at all about him. The buzz people were trying to put out there on him this year was early in the year, and it coincided with the team going into an absolute nosedive for a while. And then people took that and said like, oh, pfft, see, Luca's not that great. Like people that watch from afar don't get it. They don't get it. Cause you can't just, even if you watch just a single game of Luca, it doesn't resonate until you see him doing this again and again and again and again. And here we are now in year three. And I, I can't even count on two hands the number of times he's made my jaw hit the floor watching, like, how is he doing this? Or how did he do that? How did he make that pass? How did he have that vision? It's unreal. And I was talking in last night, I did a, after the Mavericks game, I did a quick podcast for the Kirby Create podcast, uh, talking with my buddy Law Nation. And we actually did talk a little bit of Mavericks. And, you know, he, he kind of pitched the hypothetical to me of, if you were building a team now, is there anyone in the league you would take over Luka? And, you know, I asked, like, are we talking a one-year window or are we talking, like, build for the future? You know, do I have one year to go win a championship or am I doing, like, a, hey, think of this in, like, a, a 10 or 15-year window? And my answer to both was essentially, like, nah, there's no one I give Luka up for. Maybe you can make an argument if we're talking a one-year window but again, I got to know what the rest of my roster composition is. If we're talking about a single guy to build around and you're treating this like almost like a fantasy draft type scenario, then yeah, I'm going to start out with Luca. And especially if I'm doing beyond this, because we're talking about a 22 year old kid who's already top 10 in the league. And man, you can make an argument. He's in that top five category when he's on, as he has largely been now for three months, there there's few and far between players who can be on his level, let alone exceed him. So anyway, I, I digress. Check out that entire podcast if you want, the Kirby Create podcast that's uploaded on my Derek W. Kirby uh, channel. That's a place just where I kind of do some new content I'm doing as well, whether it be uh, vlogs, things related to self-improvement, interviews of interest, things like that. And uh, some of these other side projects I've got going, but that's the one that I've been putting a considerable amount of energy into. And hey, shout out as well to another recent guest I had on there, Lindy Putnam, uh, the holistic life coach, was actually just yesterday named as one of the top 20, I believe it was. Was it top 20? Top 20 female entrepreneurs um, by Yahoo Finance. Like, holy crap. I had, like, I... She does wonderful work, and she's very insightful and bright. I had no idea when I was interviewing her on the podcast that, like, oh, wow, so this is actually, like, a much more big deal to have you on here. Like, I've known her a while, so it wasn't, you know, it's not like she views it from that standpoint where I'm not worthy, but very interesting to be able to say I had a person like that on the podcast already in episode five of this new thing I'm doing, but... Anyway, that does it for my time here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be on the lookout. I've got a lot more stuff coming. And, uh, you know, 
mix of different projects are going to start dropping here in the near future. But until next time, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect as well as the other stuff. Check out the new shirt design on represent.com. I've been hearing people tell me that I need a DDP shirt out there. Well, there is now a DDP shirt out there. Go figure. But until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace. From Prospect to Legend.